I know, I know. You want to hear what Jeb the Mimic and his new friends from World 83 are up to. I know he's funny and charismatic, but come on! He's no Aster Fortuna, bard extraordinaire! Right? Right? Well, well anyway, this week we have Ashley as Terra Dane the Human Fighter, Brian as Paxton the Human Cleric and Fighter, Danielle as Athelflaed the Halfling Rogue and Monk, and Josh as Zartok the Tiefling Wizard, and once again, Schubert from the House of Bob actual play podcast, who plays Jeb the Mimic Janitor, I, I mean Custodian. They're still exploring the Department of Evocation inside the ruined wizard research complex in search of another wand fragment. They haven't found any sign of it yet, but it has to be around here somewhere. These evocation wizards are supposed to be super dangerous. Let's find out what happens next. There's a loud uh, dinging bell noise, and the doors just swing open. The glass doors silently float about a foot inward, and then they slide to the sides, revealing a narrow platform five feet across and ten feet wide. The platform stands on the edge of a room fifty feet across and sixty feet wide. The floor of this room is twenty feet below you, and it looks as though it might be covered in some kind of dark liquid. Across the room fifty feet away, you can see another pair of glass doors in a similar platform. You can also see a lever on that distant wall next to the doors in the down position. There is a pedestal to your right on the platform with six levers on it labeled A, B, C, D, 1, and 2. Every lever is in the down position. What we have here is a puzzle. Yeah, Tara makes a face. (laughs) (laughs) Not a puzzle. A puzzle to get across this room. This is our talk room. And it's going to be difficult for me to convey to Schubert exactly what's going on here. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to send Schubert some images here to help him figure out what's going on. Is that okay, Schubert? Yep. So I'll send you some images that way. So I'm going to take a a screenshot here. Does anyone want to flip any levers before I send Mm -hmm. this? Uh, No. No, okay. So the first picture I'm going to send you is extremely unhelpful. (laughs) Um, There's really not much on it. Yep, we got it. Okay, it's a very uninteresting rectangle, right? Hmm. Um, but what you can see is, is on the south side of that room is this platform with a little panel on the east side of it. And uh, there you can see the doors on the other side of the room with another platform next to them. There's a panel with a bunch of switches on it or levers. They're labeled A, B, C, D, 1, and 2. Jeb, you know that this lady who ran air research, uh, Gail the Air Genasi, you know that she was prone to creating various weird puzzles for people to get through into her department and this is one she must have devised at some point that you haven't been through yet and just to be clear if you guys don't want to go through here you don't have to solve this puzzle now you can come back to this later if you'd like silence (laughs) complete (laughs) silence Jeb is just like Gail (laughs) come on Gail that name is a little on the nose (laughs) I like it I mean, honestly, I don't know, uh, w- like, what you guys would want through here. So I think uh, we could just, like, move loot? on if you want. I mean, is there loot? Because we do like loot. Well, didn't, didn't you say, Jeb, that the the head of this floor was a she? Is this her? Uh, yeah, but it's not Gale. It's um, uh, Gled. Okay, okay. So we don't think this puzzle's, like, going to give us the one fragment or anything. No, I... I mean, I don't think the one fragment would be here, but I mean, uh, obviously a lot has changed since I was last in here. What kind of of liquid is this? Can we tell? Down at the bottom? It's hard for you to tell. It's kind of bubbling. Oh, so it seems not great. Probably not. This seems like a workplace hazard. Yeah. And the way to reach the lever is what? The levers are right there on this panel, on this uh, platform that you're standing on. Oh, okay. So you can easily reach them. 
and pull those levers. You just don't know what they're going to do. Shall we try? Uh, well, I don't. I want to make sure the liquid's not going to hurt me. So uh, I, I'm going to take an you. arrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take an arrow and I'm going to drop it in there. Uh, okay, you hear a lot of and it sizzles, and uh, you see the wooden parts of it just sort of bubble away. Hey, spreadsheets, do you have a uh, mage hand? No, Mike. No? No. Nope. Man, what kind of wizard are you? He said he was a utility wizard before, but he doesn't have mage hand. Like yeah. a like a custodian wizard. Uh, <laughs> in what sense? What, what you want from me, mate? I got the spells I got. All right, all right. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Well, I mean, as much as I love flicking buttons, if one of those buttons makes this room flood, I don't want to be here. But the doors is open behind us. Yep, door is open behind just, us. Just pull one. We, we're not going to know what it does till we do it. Oh, you say we're just going to jump backwards? Yeah. All can, right, fair can enough. We, can we stand in the hallway but still flip the switches? Uh, No, you can't. Hmm. Even if we like use a sword or something, you could use you could you could use a uh, the mop. You could use the Jeb could stick his mop a uh, mop self in there and fl- <laughs> flick a lever. Yeah, Jeb. This this is a perfect job for Jeb. <laughs> I I mean like I could do that, but like do I want to do that? <laughs> this whole room seems like a big health and safety violation. <laughs> Yeah. Just riddled with fantasy OSHA violations. Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 willing to flick some sw- some levers if you guys want. Okay, okay. So yeah, here are your choices: A, B, C, D, one, and two. Let's be weird and just start with two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're gonna pull the two lever. Mm-hmm. That's up for Jeb to decide, really. Yeah, Jeb, <laughs> yeah. you can decide which Jeb. one you want to pull. I've had a Jeb. Uh, sure, I'll pull number two. A block of stone floats up from the floor silently. And just begins floating in midair at about the same level that you're standing at, in the middle mm. of the room. It's about five feet wide, five feet wide, five feet wide by five feet uh, across, and about ten feet high. Hmm. And it just floats in the middle of the room. Mate. Does yeah. it have any indication? Like I see a big two on it. Does it have a big two on it? Or that is, is that for just... your convenience. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Much appreciated. Uh, all right. Go ahead and flip another one. I don't, just to save like Mike's sanity, you want to just flip flip them all over, and he I'm can tell us if anything all. weird weird happens. Like some of them sink, you know. Like when you flip one, two sinks back down. Maybe we can only have a letter and a number up. Mike will just have to tell us how it works. I think I would flip uh, lever number one and then continue on with three and four, or one and then A, B, C, and D. Yeah, this switches the letters. Oh yeah, right. It's got to mean something that it's not just A, B, C, D, E, F. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. One would think, but yeah, we don't. All right, so you flip the one, and the thing that happens is another block rises from the floor, floats in the air, similar to the first block. And nothing happens to this, the for initial block? The initial block stays there. Okay. Block number two stays there. This might be a bad puzzle. I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just flip, yeah, just turn them all on. Turn all of them on. Yeah. It's just a mind game. The room's dark. You have to flip this switch <laughs> to make it <laughs> light. light on. <laughs> <laughs> the notorious light switch puzzle. <laughs> oh, Gail. <laughs> yeah, poor Gail. She thought she was so clever. Her head was full of air. Oh, oh the pun virus. Like the pun joke. virus spread to Ashley. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And here's what the room looks like now. There's another block levitating in the air. Mm, cool. That's not where I thought it would be. Hmm. And I had no expectations on where it would be. It's labeled one for your convenience. All right, keep going. So it's floating about 10 feet to the left and five feet ahead of the edge of this platform that you're starting on. Okay, D now. Keep flipping. Um, and D. also one other thing happens. Now that you've raised two blocks out of the floor, all that acid, it's acid, right, on the floor. It's not a mystery. All that acid on the floor sinks down, drains into those holes that are left from these two stones that have floated up. So there are these two stones floating here and the acid on the floor has drained into the holes that they left behind. Wait, so are you saying that there's still acid below it's just lower or are you saying all the acid has receded into the holes all the acid has receded into those two holes that have been left behind so there's now just a bare floor down below Hmm. is there anything on the floor that was beneath the acid maybe just stone oh okay no acid proof treasure chests or anything no (laughs) no no acid proof treasure chests sorry so what would stop us now from just going down there and walking across and then climbing back up yeah 
Yeah, it's a little slippery on the walls. That's it. You'd have to make some climb checks. But are those doors are they are they locked? Uh, they, you don't know. They're they're yeah. definitely closed. Anyone who listened to season one knows that climbing is not our forte. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Just, let's just flip the switches. You know. All right. So yep. Jeb, you're proceeding to one of the A, B, C, or D switches. Yep. Starting with A. Starting with A. All right. So you flick the A switch. There's a joke in there. I'm a not gonna say it. Stands for uh, I don't know. They're all A switches for Canadians. Is that what you were gonna say? <laughs> I oh. I, I'm not doing that. I'm oh. <laughs> it's the A it's switch. Up, it's up for someone else to make the joke. I was just pointing out there's something. <laughs> someone can do something with that. I don't. I don't mean to make fun of Canadians. I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Uh, they're never gonna come back, guys. <laughs> they're never gonna want to come back on the show. I'm sure. I'm sure they make fun of us all the time. <sighs> we're very I'm, sensitive in Canada. <laughs> in fact, we live in the state that most people make fun of the most. Yeah. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, yeah. there are three Florida men in this room. Oh <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? Any second we could just do something insane. <laughs> <laughs> like flip all the switches. All right. So a platform, a thin platform, rises from the floor and floats next to the thing you're standing on. Yeah, I'm saying this is a terrible puzzle. No, this, <laughs> just, this, flip, just, just flip keep all going. The switches. Yeah. All right, you're flipping number two. All right, B. 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 We already flipped. Oh, two. sorry, B. Yes, you're flipping. Well, that's B. up to Jab. Jab, you gonna flip the switch? Yep. I'm gonna flip all of them. All right. Gonna flip them all. Yeah, flip I them assume all. D yeah, just kills all. all of us instantly. <laughs> <laughs> D for die. Should have seen that coming. Oh, do that one last then. Even Terry could do this puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the platform come from? Out of the floor. Just a thin okay, layer of stone up. from the floor. The same as one and two. So I think that if it's... How, well, how would that... I'm not very good with science or spatial reasoning or being a smart person at all in any way. It, if it would have come out of the floor, wouldn't that have taken up volume and the acid would have like risen up even higher? So if we would have just flipped A, B, C, and D first, then the acid would have risen up in the room? No, the, they came out of the floor. Uh, it's just that these this platform A... And B and C and D that just came up. Okay. They take up a little bit of volume. They're very thin. Oh, okay. They're okay. not like those big blocks. Um, so they don't really have much effect on the acid. Okay, I stand on A. You stand on A, and you are standing floating above the uh, uh, ground on this pla- the, on this floating platform. All right, does it move? Nope, it doesn't move. Uh, someone below on me. It's oh. air, I don't know. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those are the platforms, A, B, C, and D, and there are these stones, one and two, and you can, st- these big squares or, or blocks of stone, one and two, all right? And you can see one sort of s- floats in the air between platforms B and D. I know this makes great audio listeners, I'm sorry. So between B and D, there's this block of stone labeled one, and you can see... It's not labeled one, though. Or is it's, it? it's labeled one on the map. One on the map. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and the map on your map it is labeled one. <laughs> so if if we like push um, Terra's block, does it float away or no. does it? it no, just, it just stays oh, there. Move? Okay. Okay, Terra climbs down. Okay, you climb down. All right, she's gonna walk across the room. Uh, make a climb check. Uh, to climb down. Yeah, to climb down without Was, slipping that, on the wall. Um, yeah. Athletics. Athletics. Oh. Okay, so I. What are we going to do with Jeb? We a just... nine. A uh, nine. You slip and fall. Bummer. Okay. I get up. So you take <laughs> seven points of falling damage. Wow. Ooh. That was a lot. Whoa. You fell should, 20 feet. Should I try it being that I, I have like acrobatics and stuff? You should. Yeah. Sure. You can try. If anyone has rope or anything, you could use that. That's part of my thieves tool kit, right? You, you have some. I think you have as part of your equipment. You have a rope. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Jeb, do you want to pull any of the levers again while you're at it? No. No, oh, Jeb. <laughs> <laughs> I already pulled all of them, right? Oh, I know, but I mean, you could move them back to the down position or if there's anything else you want to do. Turns out Jeb's evil. <laughs> <laughs> I just start hitting all of them randomly. No, <laughs> I'll just leave them alone. All right. Ethel Flad, do you want to climb yep. down? Yeah. Using a rope? Yeah. All right. You can climb down without any trouble using a rope. 23. All right. You, you get down quite easily next to Tara. You want to just walk across the room or what? Um, yep. 
Okay. Yeah. And climb up the other side. There's no rope to get up the other side. Don't well, that's okay, because I actually I have climbing tools. So. Okay. We'll make a climb check with advantage, then. How far down is it? 20 feet. Uh, 18 plus my bonuses would be... Uh, no problem. A lot. Yeah, 24. Yep. You easily make it up to the other platform. Yep. Okay. Uh, do these doors open? No, they don't open. You solved the puzzle. <laughs> yeah. The doors don't open. Okay. I would push really hard. Uh, you want to try and force them open? Yes. All right. You have to make a strength check. Okay. Uh, okay. Alpha, can you help me? Yeah. Two of you I push on the doors. she's up here too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So can I do it with advantage? Yes. You make your strength check with advantage. Yeah. All right. 23. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You actually force the doors open and there is a loud crack noise and all of the platforms and stones recede back down into the ground and the acid comes back up. <laughs> oh God, nobody was down there. Uh, and all the, le- all the levers return to their previous position. Uh, go ahead and uh, hit those, hit one and two again. Okay. Yeah, I, I hit that, one and so. two again. I, I'm going right. to like keep the doors open. The stones float back up into the air and the acid recedes back into the floor and the bit of rope that was dangling on the floor has dissolved away, but otherwise the room is back to the way it was before. Uh, puzzle solved. <laughs> That's one way to solve it. I feel like we had math homework and we just looked at the back of the book yeah. and then uh, that was it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you had answers in the back I think of the we, book? We, we, we ripped the book in half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the equivalent of solving a Rubik's Cube by just smashing it with a hammer. <laughs> Point peeling the stickers off. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So the door is open on the other side, and Terra and Athelflaed are across, and the rest of you are not. What do you want to do? Uh, I, I, I have rope, too, so I'm going to let it down so that those guys can climb up, but I can't help you on the jumping down part. Well, they have rope on their side. They could, they could yeah, climb we down. Could, we could the one that it fizzled out. out. I mean, Jeb, oh, I Jeb is so sticky, he could just about climb down without a rope. Wow, Jeb. All right, come on, guys. <laughs> Jeb, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't help it, man. Don't, don't shame me. I thought he was clean. <laughs> what is, That's this? why he's so obsessed with cleaning, because he doesn't want dust to just stick to him. Oh, he's going to get exactly. his ultimate punishment, you, being man. obsessed with cleaning everyone, but himself being dirty. Uh, <laughs> Not dirty, just sticky. Yeah, Mike, we'll just we'll climb down and then climb up the other side. Just let us know what rolls we need or anything. Okay. Uh, you don't. If there are ropes and you have plenty of time, then and and you know Terra and Athelflaed have already secured everything, then I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. Um, you can you can get up and down without trouble. Here is the area that you can see. I kind of want to know what we were supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> you would have had to experiment bad. more with the levers okay. and uh, um, that's yeah. You would have had to have someone standing on them, and it would have taken a little bit Figuring of time probably. Out. This is a way better radio way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Brute force. So once you force these doors open, uh, like the other doors, they float away from you and then off to the sides. And the room beyond is a mess. There are torn papers and tattered books scattered across the floor. Workbenches fill the large space to the west, and the workbenches are littered with glass containers and metal boxes. Around the corner to the east, you can see living quarters through open doors. A small sitting area is in the northeast corner of this main room with a beat-up couch, a comfortable chair, and a low table. And a magical lamp is glowing warmly behind the couch. Let me go look at the work tables and stuff. Okay. There are various glass containers on them of varying thickness, and each of them has some sort of silvery liquid inside. And each glass container has a black metal plate under it with a little lever on it. A pull lever. Oh, um, one more thing. There are metal boxes with flaps on the side and e- next to each of these little glass containers with a silvery liquid inside. Tara flicks the lever to the next position, And you can see that the metal plate under the glass container that you've selected begins to turn red and heat up. Yeah, it's air shrugs and walks away. Okay. (laughs) It gets hotter and hotter. This is a Zartok thing. Um, Also, as you walk away, you see there's another table that has a large glass sphere on it with a metal tube inside filled with this silvery liquid. And then there's the largest metal box next to it. Yeah, uh, Tara's looking for anything else that would actually interest her in this room. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, there's those open doors on the opposite side that lead to living quarters. Yep. Yep. I mean, if anyone's actually interested in playing with this stuff, anyone it's just Tara is in character. Totally not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyone want to play with the uh, metal plates and glass containers? Uh, Paxton wants to lift the flaps on the metal box to see what's inside. Okay. Uh, there are white crystals inside that, as soon as you open the box, begin emitting gentle breezes that blow over the glass containers. 
That's nice. Cool. <laughs> I'd like to check the sofa for uh, loose change. <laughs> okay, uh, make a perception check. Okay. That life magazine. Cool. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. Uh, you find. All the differences are circled. Yeah. <laughs> you find six silver pieces hidden in the cushions. Sweet. The what is what is the the sofa look really worn and the chair looks comfortable? Why? Yeah. I mean, like no one's sitting in the <laughs> um, chair. What's going on here? They're. <laughs> They, I don't know. Is it magical? <laughs> They're just, <laughs> it's just a comfy chair. I don't know. I, I mean, because to me, the sofa sounds like you know beaten down and like like a like a real. It's a well loved couch. Well yeah. loved and. And then the chair just looks like nice, like new. No, it doesn't look new. It just looks comfortable. Uh, okay. <laughs> you lock on to the weirdest stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't read too far into that Craigslist ad. Just, yeah. <laughs> you, you got a you got a puzzle room and a room full of weird bottles with wind blowing crystals <laughs> and magic silver liquid, and you're focused on a chair and yeah, a couch. Well, what if it's a magical chair? <laughs> I would love a magical armchair. Just saying that uh, one that Tara left on the metal plate that she left on. You can see that silver liquid is rising inside that glass container. Should, okay. Should we have turned it off? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So All right. I'll we'll turn it off. No, turn it off. All right. Eventually, it cools off, and that liquid goes back down. Yeah, let's not mess around with it unless we have to. Whatever. Oh, I meant to ask this earlier, but in uh-huh. that other room where the holes of the one and two rocks opening up, Zartuk would have looked down into the hole. What would have been there? That bubbly the a- greenish liquid. The acid just went the acid. Too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tara is bored and looks into the living quarters. While this is going on, I feel like Jeb would just be furiously cleaning this room. Yes, it's got so, a lot to organize. Yeah, um, sorting so, yeah. everything into the right places and oh, yeah, yeah, there tidying is, up. like bits of paper. Is there anything yeah. that like we can read? You guys can read. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just not Paulie McCann, but you know the rest of us were great. Okay. That's why I'm the coolest one. Yeah, because not reading is cool for some reason. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for every reason. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, living quarters. Um, beyond the doors to the east are living quarters, including a bed, a writing desk, a dresser with a large, expensive silver mirror, and a large armoire, whose open doors reveal at least a dozen shimmering, flowing robes. An enormous fur rug of some unidentifiable animal lies in the middle of the floor, covered in dust. The bed has been neatly made, and the desk is clear, except for an inkwell with a fountain pen in it. Are these magical robes? I'm going to go open the desk. Yeah. All right, you open the desk. There are some blank sheets of parchment, but nothing else really of, of interest in there. It's very neat, though. It's very well organized. Uh, I mess it up. All right, you <laughs> scatter the parchment around. Uh, there's nothing reason. to be found. Okay. Yep, there is the, the armoire full of robes. Take that, there's Gale. There's the bed. <laughs> yeah. Gail will never mess with you again. <laughs> ever ever since the Eastern Bubble uh, research facility, Paxton has been obsessed with finding things under rugs. So okay. he's going to flip up the rug and see if there's like a trap door underneath it. There's not. I'm sorry. I should have put something there. But no, there's nothing there. <laughs> I'm just rummaging through the neat room. Also, for the sake of listeners, that was the Western Bubble research facility. Western. Yes. Yeah. Just in case anyone gets confused. How'd they do West and East? I mean, the, the sun was in the straight up. There's a big inn painted on the wall <laughs> on the side of the world. <laughs> yeah, the hallway was oriented north, south, east, west, and so they had the same cardinal directions. They had the same magnetic force. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, that means it is... Uh, yeah, is there anything you want to do? You're, you're searching, I guess? Yes. All right. Um, I guess anyone that wants to search, make a perception check. And and Jeb, uh, Jeb make a... Um, I don't know. Make um, an intelligence check... <laughs> Um, with, I don't know, I guess you, you should have some excellent proficiency bonus for cleaning. Uh, maybe roll with, like, plus six or something? Does that sound reasonable? Uh, let's, let's... it does, but I rolled a two. Oh, well, okay, you're trying to clean, but there's just not enough time, and you need to get some more of your cleaning supplies to do a better job. And Tara's, like, messing, messing things, things up and up. making my yeah. job harder. Yeah. <laughs> I'm searching. You can't just, like, keep things tidy when you're looking through stuff. <laughs> Anybody looking, anybody yeah, rolling I, perception checks? I rolled a 13 total. Okay. Ethelflaed, um, you decide that one of these robes inside this closet is uh, extra shiny. It's all covered in uh, reflective blue material. You're not sure what it's made of. Um, it's it's really pretty, uh, but that's the only thing that you find. Hey, guys, um, can you uh, check this out and see if it's magical? 
I thought that would look nice on you. Ooh. Um, maybe long, but yeah, nice. I can I can have it trimmed, right? Yeah. And you also find a uh, scroll, uh, Tara, a scroll of something, a magic scroll. Uh, hey, it's a paper. Zardog. <laughs> she, like, waves it at him. It's a spreadsheet. Come and get it's it. Spreadsheet. <laughs> spreadsheet fodder. <laughs> yeah. So I took a look at it. And also, uh, what what size was Gale? He needs new clothes. Gale <laughs> was, clothes an, was all torn up. She was an air genasi. Okay. I don't know what that means. <laughs> is this, is this robe really long on me? Yeah. Yeah, it's too long for Athelflaed. I just wrap it around myself several times. Is there anything under the bed? Uh, no, there's nothing under the bed. Dang. Monster. Yep. Uh, what's the other square? I mean, I got the armoire, doors open, desk, and then there's something else. Uh, you know, like long rectangular in the room mm. to the to the west side. What's that? Oh, that's just a small shelf. All right, there's, and we'll go look at the shelf. There is a few glass vases with some dead flowers in them. There's a, some sheets that have been neatly folded and, and set up on the, put on that shelf, but there's there's nothing else. This room is really not that interesting. The most interesting things you found are the the pretty blue robe and the uh, scroll. Okay, I'm going to go into what I assume is the bathroom. This is a fancy bathroom, um, and as you enter, the water in the faucet begins flowing, and... Uh, you feel like a gentle breeze flow through the room. So you're saying we broke this puzzle <laughs> and we got nothing. <laughs> hey, I'm checking out this scroll. And All right, so the scroll. Uh, we got free water. Yeah. Fill you got me free, up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and pretty ropes. They could be magical, I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to find out what spell list this spell is on. I'm going to say Paxton can recognize it. All right. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's on a wizard spell list. I don't think it is. But it's it's create or destroy water. Oh. I already have that spell. Yes, you do. So. But it's another scroll of it. Maybe we can sell it or something. And then there are these robes. You haven't decided if they're magic or not, but they're definitely pretty. All right. Tara's going to go uh, sit on the comfy chair. Okay. It is a comfy chair. Yep. She's waiting. All right. <laughs> I want to check the pockets and all the robes. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I think we're going to have to move it along here. <laughs> <laughs> There's there's nothing else of interest in here. Whatever was in here that was important, Gail took with her when she left. Why Gail. did she trap the door and she's not even inside? Oh my god, why? Okay. Shall we make our way back across the acid room and see what else is around? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean we could figure out the experiment, but Why? Yeah. Zartuk will do that later. We'll come okay. back. We need the win the the wand fragment, that's what we're here for, so Alright, so where are you heading? Uh, back the other way and then go down the hall. All right, so you're going to b- go down the rest of the hallway? Uh-huh. Okay. I need to see you even if it ends up in a dead end. I got a completionist. So it heads around the corner. There is a closed door here. The glass door to this room appears to twist and turn with internal motion. Something behind the door is moving, though it's hard to make out what is happening through the thick glass. The wall around these doors appears to have been blackened by flames and words have been burned or carved into the wall on the right with the crude letters spelling out, you will all burn. This guy again. He's Mm -hmm. a charmer. Yeah. Uh, so open it? Okay. You want to just pull the door open? Uh, I mean, something's behind it. We can't tell what it is. Uh, yeah. Okay. You pull the door handle. The door swings open silently on large bronze hinges that have turned green with the passage of time. And you are confronted with water. a solid wall of water. And it just stands in front of you as though held back by very thin glass. You can make out things floating in the water within. There must be a light somewhere back in the room, but it's murky enough that you can't make it out. Uh, can I stick my hand through the wall of water and see how thick it is? Sure. Roll for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> At least something good. Oh my gosh. We were not ready. So Paxton, what did you get? A natural 20. Ooh, uh, so 21. Yeah. Go. We uh, uh, push it Jeb, what did you get? <laughs> I rolled an 11, so 12 total. And Tara? I rolled a 1, so 7. Oh, she's got that alertness thing. Epilema got a 7. Zartok? 4. And I'm a little sad that I have the same dexterity bonus as a mop bucket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Athelflaed? 
Uh, 11 total. And the creature gets a 12. <laughs> Paxton, here's what happens. You mm-hmm. reach in and you touch this water. And some kind of tentacle or something no. reaches out of the water. And it's made of water itself. Cool. This weird watery uh, tentacle or limb reaches out and uh, swings at you. And during this first round, you're surprised, right? Uh, this is a surprise. I'm very surprised. Yeah, you're very surprised. <laughs> DM's note. Oops, I forgot that Tara has the alert feat, which means that she can't be surprised. She was supposed to be able to act on the first round of combat. This is a creature. Um, uh, maybe you know what it is. If you want to, uh, you can, on your turn, you could make a, a roll and see if you can figure out what it is. But it attacks Paxton and tries to grab him. And it tries to grab you, but of course, uh, it's very difficult to do anything to Paxton and that involves grabbing or hitting. And so it, it grabs a Paxton, but it just sort of splashes against your shield and is not able to do anything to you. Uh, and that means we are now into a regular round. Paxton, it is your turn. There's this pseudopod flopping around, uh, all squishy and wet, dripping on the floor here. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to jerk my arm back out of the water wall and uh-huh. then try to... Like, instinctively draw my sword and chop that pseudopod. Okay, make an attack roll. Ooh, that's a 23. All right, that is a hit. All right. That is eight damage. Okay. Jeb, what do you want to do? There's a pseudopod reaching out of here. You can probably remember what this is. Maybe you you think that uh, this is one of the creatures that Pylora, the Triton, kept in here. This is a water weird. So... Jeb, what do you want to do? Is the Okay, so I'm somewhat familiar with the water yep. weird. Do I know it's just here to kind of like defend its area? Yep, to guard that area. Okay. Yeah, you know that um, Pylora would sometimes just keep her whole area filled with water. Right. Uh, she could also drain the water out somehow. You don't know how. But she would keep it filled with water, and apparently she left this thing here to defend it. And she was gone, or maybe she's in there. You don't know. Um, all right, well, I'm going to kind of like look at everyone and be like, I mean, you know, do we really need to go through here, guys? Uh, like, we could just, like, head back, eh? We don't need to fight everything. <laughs> Harold is confused by that line of thinking. <laughs> uh, you guys said you were looking for, like, a wand fragment, eh? Mm-hmm. Well, huh. I, I know, like, Pylora used to, like, use the wand fragment, but I don't think she, like, owned it, you know? Yeah, uh, wouldn't it, like, uh, and all this water be frozen if it was over here. Yeah, yeah. Man, she's smart. Yeah, see? So we're just going to have a conversation about this while we're being attacked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's probably too much to say in yep. six all seconds. Right. That's fine. <laughs> uh, it's the water weird's turn. Unless, unless you want to do anything else, Jeb. Uh, well, if I see that they're going to just stay here and attack it, then uh, then I'll okay. join in the fray. All right. Do a fire bolt, or what's the plan? Um, Can I go over and bite it? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the mop bucket wheels over. <laughs> Makes an attack. Oh, man. I'm rolling terrible today. Uh, five, I rolled a five, so ten total. Okay. Uh, that misses. Not by much, but it misses. The water weird just sort of whips itself out of the way of the mop bucket. So it's the water weird's turn. The water weird reaches out and attempts this time to attack Athelflaed. Reaches out with this pseudopod. Uh-oh. I'll guard her with my shield. All right, so you're going to impose disadvantage. Yes. All right, so that means uh, it got a 16. I don't think that hits Athelflaed. No, it doesn't. Nope. All right, so Athelflaed, you're able to duck out of the way of this pseudopod as uh, it tries to grab you, and that's all it can do on its round. That is Athelflaed's turn. What do you want to do? Um, I guess stab it. Okay. Um, so I'll hit it with the green biter. Okay. You attack it with green biter. 18 total. 18. Uh, that is a hit. And don't forget that green biter does acid damage, too. Mm-hmm. Six. Am I close to my friends? Uh, your friends are within melee range, so okay. you can do sneak attack damage as well. 15 total. 15. Not bad. Athelflight carves off a big chunk of this water weird. Epilema's turn. She goes... Uh, purple in the face. Vein pops out. We have one hit. 
and she's bald now, so there's like lots hit. of veins. Yeah, like it's even scarier veins. now. And she the attacks with her battle axe. So that's that's a good chunk of damage there. She carves off a big chunk of this thing. It's not so tough. Tara, it's your turn. What do you want to do? Tara's gonna attack it. I'm shocked. <laughs> Uh, one is an 11 to hit, and the other is a 15 to hit. 15 hits. Eight damage. Eight damage. All right. It is in really bad shape. It's starting to become a much smaller tendril now. It's kind of snake-like in appearance, but it's less snake-like as it gets smaller and smaller. And that is Zartok's turn. Is this... So what is a water weird? Is this just a tentacle coming out of the water? It's a basically? snake-like water elemental creature. Oh, like Okay. Now, is this the is the door is the water wall right by the door? So we're all fighting it outside at, of the door. Yeah, outside the doorway. Okay. Yep. Um, it keeps trying to grab someone and pull them in. Yeah. Could Zartok just close the door? You could. Okay. Zartok closes the door. All right. Zartok closes the door. Everyone hops out of the way, I assume, unless you want to get shut in there with it. No. Hop no. Out of the way. No. All right. Zartok closes the door. Just come on, Mike. We can come back. That water was weird. <laughs> <laughs> So the door is shut. You don't hear anything coming from the other side. That wasn't tough. We could have done it. All right. What's the plan? <laughs> I guess we walk to the big doors. Okay. You walk to the big double doors. We still get XP for that, though. Yeah, totally. <laughs> he tells the DM. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So, sometimes you just strongly suggest it. Hopefully that works out for the best. But is it the same amount if you don't kill it, though? Who knows? That's all behind the, the DM screen. Yeah. But do we get XP for solving that puzzle? Just wondering. Oh, of course. Was it a total waste of time? Or? Sure. You solved it. Lots Terrace, of experience. Tara solved the Man, heck out you, of that puzzle. You adventurers, you guys are all just about the experience. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. and the loot. <laughs> and the loot. <laughs> You uh, walk into this next hall. The steel doors crank. Uh, excuse me. The steel doors creak open slowly, and you immediately hear a voice call out from the ceiling. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes of Heat. Tremble and be awestruck by these, the most powerful. Je- Jeb arcane. wheels <laughs> over <laughs> and uh, pulls a lever on on the wall to turn it off. Oh man, that that's like that's so annoying, eh? Yeah. Yeah, good job, Mike. So many times. So there's a light that had turned on at the left end of the hallway, far away to your south, illuminating a carving on the wall that you can't quite quite make out from here. And in fact, all the walls are covered with carvings of wizards throwing firebolts, and again, as our scorcher and fireball and meteor storm and other explosive spells. And you can see that there are two more enormous steel doors in front of you, as well as a single door 70 feet down this large hall to your right, and another single door 70 feet down the large hall. Your hey, left. I'll go and turn it back on. <laughs> is that the, is that the flag going to turn it back on? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, Please man. move down the hallway to your <laughs> left and begin the glorious history of the most powerful wizards of all Hacks time. Hacks turns it off. <laughs> <laughs> Tara does head left, though, because that's her thing. <laughs> and then the flag goes back and turns it <laughs> oh, It all begins with the soul of the Infernal, who excavated the first version of this facility with her powerful explosive spells. Isolde trained Fiona the Flaming and Chelsea the Chard, who after a long series of duels eventually killed each other. Oh my god, turn it off! <laughs> <laughs> right? Paxton grapples Athelflaine. <laughs> <laughs> Sartok turns it How off. How are we going to find out about all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Jeb. He's our historian. That's right. He's our living tour guide. <laughs> you got that all right. right. The hallway is quiet again. All right. I walk to the left. <laughs> walk to the left. Apple Flat, you can listen to it like uh, while I mess around with the f- silver tubes in the yeah, other room. Sounds good. Yeah, just figure it out. <laughs> you, can, you guys just spend your leisure time here. And Tara and I will go back and fight that water wall thing. <laughs> yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> Everybody can do their Take own thing. Take a nice thing. swim. Yeah. <laughs> That's in the ending credits as it rolls down. What happens to us? <laughs> Sartok played with the vials. <laughs> I was thinking I could just read the rest of the dialogue over the ending credits. That's right. what you do. That's what the GM does. The monologue, I should Paxton say. Paxton drowned in the water room. <laughs> this door to the south is a simple steel door with a knob. And Tara, of course, is just going to open it, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yep. I mean, see, it swings open. Unless it says anything. Nope. It just swings open easily with a squeak, revealing a hallway about 100 feet long. And there are two doors in the right and two doors in the left. And each door is standing slightly open. And you can just walk down and look pretty easily. Uh, these are seminar rooms on the left. 
with the tables arranged in a U-shape facing chalkboards and a, a lectern. And the two doors on the right lead to classrooms with many small student desks. And they've all been pushed up against the walls, leaving an open area in the middle of the room that shows signs of damage from spells. I'm going to rummage around the rooms for a bit. Fire spells? Uh, these rooms are actually pretty clean. Uh, Jeb, you can tell that whenever you last cleaned in here, they pretty much haven't been used since then. Hmm. But you know that they practiced lots of fire spells in here. And uh, you had done some cleaning. You always had to clean up after them, and they are still pretty clean. So whatever has been going on, they haven't really been using the seminar or classrooms. That's good. That's good. Yes, that's <laughs> great. All right, where to next? Uh, double doors. Double doors. These doors, of course, Jeb, you know, these double doors lead to fire research. However, as you touch these doors, they are incredibly cold to the touch. They, 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 they feel quite cold. There's no ice on them. But they are very cold. I take out my glove. <laughs> you just have one glove? If the doors are cold, I think that means we're getting warmer. Oh, oh, Paxton. Yes. oh Paxton. It's my special wand touching glove. Oh, right. Your wand touching glove. Yes. Great. So uh, the doors slowly swing inward as you touch them. There is a large, nearly diamond-shaped room on the other side, almost 90 feet across and 180 feet wide. And on the other side of the room is a single closed door leading to a smaller room. I There's a lot of shape. Short, sort of, yeah. There's a lot to take in as you look around the room. There are piles of ash around the room, as well as charred bits of furniture and what must have once been stone tabletops whose supports have been incinerated. The wall to the north has shelves set into the stone, and they are filled with bits of broken and melted glass. A charred, desiccated corpse leans against the southeast wall. In general, the room is a mess. Most importantly, in the middle of the room, about 40 feet away, four humanoid figures are frozen in place. Three of them, a human-looking woman, a male dwarf, and a woman with fish-like features, stand with their fingers on a small white glowing object facing toward the fourth figure and away from you. A beam of bright white light emanates from the glowing object and strikes this fourth figure. The figure is recoiling from the light and hovers slightly above the ground, suspended by ice that comes up from the floor and surrounds it. The ice is so dense that you cannot make out the features of the person inside, but its skin or clothing appears to be black. The ice radiates outward from this figure, coating the floor around it with frost. So are they completely frozen to where, like, their eyes aren't even moving? They're not Uh, You're not close enough to tell from here. Ah, okay. One more thing. Just to the right side of the doors, up against the wall, is a shiny, wheeled mop bucket. (sighs) Oh, man. I gotta get that mop bucket, you guys. It's so shiny. <laughs> <laughs> is the what? mop bucket a nice too? Uh, mm-hmm. No, the mop bucket is is just sitting there by the wall. I like that you even drew it in. Yep, it's drawn in there. It is important. Yep, gotta have the mop bucket. I'm gonna go check out the body to the southeast. Okay, mm-hmm. you check out the body against the wall. Is there anything? Um, yeah. I'd like you to make a perception check. Not great at those, but twelve. Twelve. Okay. Um. The body is nearly cremated, but it's clear that it was a humanoid, and it had a tail. You can see a few scales among the ashes. Oh, man. I think that might have been Gled, you guys. That's a good guess. She's the uh, the administrator, dragonborn sorcerer. Mm-hmm. Man. And she's the one that rough. you said had the one fragment, right? Yeah, she's the one that had the one fragment. Uh, yeah. Okay. Not, not anymore. What else do you want to look at? Um... Well, okay, so I figured out who she was, and then I'm guessing that the three in the middle of the room are probably the other, like, heads of research for the other elements, and they are looking at fire element guy. That's my assessment, and I will say that aloud (laughs) as I walk to those bodies to examine them. Yeah, I think that uh, the dwarven guy is that thumbrod guy, and uh, I assume, like, Gale... The air genasi, she might be in there. I'm not sure. Uh, Humanoid lady. Pylora, the the triton. I think that's that the fishy dude. Hmm. Makes sense. Does yeah. there appear to be a wand in this mess of stuff? Yeah, so they all have their fingers together on this wand, the, the three on one side that you've identified as the heads of research of air and earth and uh, water. They all have their fingers on something that is glowing white and looks to be probably that one fragment that you need. Oh, gosh. How do we get to this? Yeah, so this is fun. This is the puzzle. 
hey, let's <laughs> let's fill up that room with acid again, <laughs> and then let's drop uh, our old fire boy right into it, and then uh, then we'll wake up these three. Uh, Tara, you are walking up to these figures. I'd like you to make a perception check. Okay, three. Yep, they're they're frozen. <laughs> uh, okay, so as uh, as Zartok's going off with his plan, Tara is going to take out a chain breaker. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Jeb, are you doing anything? Uh, well, I mean, I was gonna check out that shiny mop bucket, but I think, yeah. um, I think uh, the first thing that I want to do before I do that is just see if any of these bodies are perhaps uh, Bism. Okay, so as you uh, wheel over toward uh, where Tara is looking at these figures, she's getting out a, a, a war pick. And yeah, the, the guy that's floating in the air, you're pretty sure that has to be Bism. Oh, man. So uh, here's the thing, uh, Jeb. I'm thinking we're going to need this wand fragment, but uh, I don't know if these guys are going to be alive or dead when we get the wand fragment, but, you know, I can take this uh, war pick to Bism right here because he seems crazy and we can make sure that, you know, he's pretty hurt or just dead when we get the wand fragment, Whoa. you know? I mean, like, that seems pretty, uh, pretty brutal. Like justice, but, like, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that guy's like a jerk. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Jeb, roll a perception check. <laughs> I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> they are so frozen. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh Yeah, man, these guys are so frozen like you yeah. <laughs> know. Yeah. Hey, so I just figure like he'll just crumble like I when I hit him. Probably. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. <laughs> so is that the plan? Apparently, well, if no one else is gonna try and perceive something. I can't see this going wrong. What what was what was wrong with uh, plan? Dr- drop them with acid. Pa- Paxton sees Tara walking up to these frozen figures and then pulling out a war pick <laughs> and immediately gets very concerned, but doesn't do anything. Uh, he's he's watching her. He's like, she's not actually just gonna bust these frozen figures up, is she? Yeah, so, of course. Why wouldn't she? Out the flag shrugs. <laughs> Apolima yeah. says, hey, I think she's going to bust up these frozen figures. That's so cool. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. Hey, Tara, are you going to get uh, the, the butthead wizard? Are you going to do all of them? Uh, I was just going to get the butthead wizard because I figured the other guys, they're, they're your friends, right, Deb? They, you, they're good people? Uh, I mean, <laughs> not really. Like, to be honest, they're all kind of jerks. But, like, only Bism, you know, Bism was the one who, like, turned me into a mimic. So, So if we, like... You know, if we help them do away with Bism, which they seem to have been doing, then they'll be like, "Yay, great job, Tara!" Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, or, or yeah, yeah, and it's also best better not to like scar them as you like chop up some dude in front of them. Yeah, can, can they? Um, <laughs> is it possible to remove the wand fragment where it is, or is it also in a? It's frozen? also encased in ice. Okay. You know, Tara, since Bism turned Jeb into a mimic, maybe you could let him, like, firebolt Bism's head off or something. I mean, he Mm. could, but I I was worried that might melt the ice, and then we'd have to actually fight him, and I just thought maybe if we just chopped him in half as a statue, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah, okay. What? Why don't you give it a try? Try swinging it once and see if the ice just comes back right away, because the one fragment might just be continuous. Oh, what if it hurts me? The ice? Yeah, you might be frozen. Do it. Oh, wait, hold on. I got my glove. <laughs> I, got I thought you had a pair of tongs. I thought glove. that's what he gave you to handle the wand fragments. I think it was tongs. I thought it was glove. I thought they were barbecue mitts. I, did I write it anywhere? Who knows? Just ice tongs. Hold on. Let me go look at my notes. Maybe you should let Epilema, like, chuck a hatchet at it or a javelin. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I can, up, I, I can throw a javelin. I'll give you a copper piece if you can take his head off from across the room. Okay, this is exactly what I um, wrote uh-huh. in my notes, which, as we know, can be messed up. Tongs, comma, gauntlets, comma, thick gloves to handle the wand <laughs> fragment, dash, got tongs. Yes, got, <laughs> yes, you have tongs. So Hashtag got tongs. <laughs> got tongs. Got tongs. <laughs> it means that all those things could be used to handle the one fragment, but what you actually have okay. are tongs. <laughs> Got tongs. <laughs> Got tongs, question mark. <laughs> what are you going to do then? Well, I, I can't wield my hammer with tongs. <laughs> do- <laughs> <laughs> you can always try. <laughs> Epilema, do it. Throw it. Throw, throw it, Jeff. Throw it, throw all it. right. Well, she'll, <laughs> she'll make an attack. She'll have advantage if you want her to. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, she'll attack with a javelin. You really you want me to just throw it at this guy that's just floating here frozen? Yeah, totally. We want to see if it'll shatter him. All right, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, no. Okay, so she throws her javelin, and it goes glancing off the ice and spins away you know, across the room and didn't actually break through the ice. All right. Hmm. That's not your best. Yeah, uh, that was not good. That was not my best throw. We could just like pretend we didn't see that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's do have a do over, right? Um, how? Where is everyone at this point? Oh, why are you asking that? <laughs> yeah, I need to know where everyone is. Uh oh. I know where Jeb and Tara are. They're next to these figures. I- I'm next to Epilema. All right, I've, so Epilema is her, just a few feet away. Her moral support, you know. Okay. Paxton's hiding in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm standing next to Epilema. Okay. I think I might be unattuned to Chainbreaker. Oh. And so I'm going to go ahead and just quietly tuck him away and take <laughs> out my uh, attuned sword. Okay. Zartok, where are you? I don't know. Where should I go? Just put me somewhere. I'm kind of walking around the room examining the statue. So whenever, okay. just randomly roll for where I am when this... <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> goes to hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, Paxton and Epilema are close enough. Uh, Paxton, roll a perception check. 22. His, his eyes are moving <laughs> under great, it. great, because rolled a three. Um, all right, so, yeah, you notice, finally, someone looked and noticed that Bism's eyes are darting back and forth inside this ice. You can yeah. see that he is. his eyes are moving around. You can also see these figures that are covered in ice... They're in a thinner layer of ice than Bism is, and under the ice, all their clothes and skin and their hair all appear to be gray. Does Bism's uh, skin appear to be gray? It's all black. Are their uh, eyes moving? No. I say, uh, hey, are you are you Bism? And I look at his eyes. Uh, his eyes sort of turn and look at you. They're they're wild and open, but he can't respond. So you're the one that turned our friend Jeb into a mimic, huh? He doesn't do anything. Hmm. Blink once for yes. <laughs> yeah. He does not Twice blink. For no. He does not blink. Hmm. Well, I tell the rest of the party that uh, Bism, Bism looks like he's still alive. His eyes are moving around. I think Jeb uh, would instinct, like, immediately kind of uh, wheel himself behind Paxson to hide, <laughs> hide from Bism. Don't worry, little buddy. We'll keep you safe. It's probably smart, yeah. Hmm. When we remove the uh, the one fragment on the um, divination level, the ice didn't immediately come back on the frozen door. It was, I mean, it didn't immediately melt. So if we just want to chip away, cut the one fragment loose, then we can wheel our friend Bism into somewhere else and sort of deal with him rather than uh, risk setting him free. Hmm. We can just kind of... Uh, Dump them in the acid. You dump them in the acid. Yeah, yeah. You. That's okay. why I like you, Tara. Let's see how we can get to the the wand fragment. Okay. So the wand fragment is at the tips of the fingers of these three wizards, or I guess wizards and a sorcerer. It's frozen, encased in ice with them. How how thick is the ice? Oh, let's say it's a couple inches. Okay. Uh, so. If we like maybe like a fire cantrip or something and I'll get my tongs ready and yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a plan. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. All right. So you're going to uh, try to melt the uh, fragment free and grab it and stick it with the other fragments. Yes. All right. So it works. I mean, it's really not difficult. You shoot it with a, a fire bolt and the ice melts pretty quickly and you grab it and throw it into your case and it snaps together with the other wand fragments. But at the same time, suddenly, the three figures that were touching the one fragment just collapse to the floor. The ice collapses, and there's just this pile of ash there. Ew. And the figure that was standing in front of them suddenly erupts in flames. The ice goes up uh, in steam, and there's a figure floating in front of you. And, oh, Baba. And instead of being black, charred flesh, it lights up in flame, and it shouts, Everything will... Burn! Oh, oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess you have to roll for initiative. That's not good. Oh, cripes. Yep. 
Oh, jeez. Oh, can I roll my... Um, so I just got a 16 on initiative. I got to roll my two uh, divination Divination, rolls. yeah. yeah go, do the, go ahead and do those. One's an 18 and one's a 6. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a 6 on his initiative, the fire boy. Oh, you don't want to find out what he got first, huh? All right. Uh, he's got a six, and so that means... Okay, well, if I can find out what he got first, that's fine. Um, I think you get to find out what numbers, what rolls are before you replace them, right? I'll read it real quick. Paxton, what did you get for initiative? I got a six. Jeb, what did you get? I rolled a one. Oh, boy. Yeah, Ooh. so that's a two total. All right. He's quite two. afraid. And Athelflaed, what did you get? Fourteen total. And Epilema. Epilema did great. Only she goes toward the end. And Tara, what'd you get? Twelve. And Zartok, what did you roll for your own initiative? I got a 16 for Zartok's initiative. So it says you can replace any roll, which makes me think that you can wait and see what it is. Yeah. Um, later on, it does say you must choose to do so before the roll, but I think that just means you are accepting the important roll, I guess. I'm not sure. Okay, well... Uh, he rolled um, a six for initiative himself. Oh, so it really so, didn't matter. Uh, and his dexterity bonus is three, which I think means he beats Paxton, though. What's your dexterity bonus, Paxton? One. So that means first to go in this combat will be Epilema. And Epilema is um, not reluctant to just walk up and swing at him. So she's bursts into her rage yet again. And she hits him once with her magical axe for... Eh, an okay hit. So she swings at him and cuts out a big chunk and a gout of flame comes out of the gash in his side. Oh, cool. And Epilema takes fire damage. Uh-oh. Is he a human or is his, like, skin on fire? Or? His skin appears to be on fire. Yeah, he, his body appears to be on fire. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, uh, I forgot. A lair action takes place on losing initiative 20. The lair action oh, is... You're all pretty close. Yeah, so a, a wave of fiery force emanates from his body. Targets within a 20-foot radius, which is all of you, must make a DC 15 dex saving throw. Cool, cool, cool. Failed. Epilema failed. 24. So Epilema's prone, Terra's prone. Zartok, did you beat? I, f- I failed. Uh, Zartok's prone. Paxton? I saved, and because I have that shield master thing. Yeah, you'll yeah. take no damage. There isn't any damage from this anyways. It just oh. knocks you prone. A- uh, Athelflaed uh, saved. What did Jeb get? Uh, Jeb got a 21. Jeb got a 21. He saved. So that means Epilema, Zartok, and Terra are prone. They'll have to get up. And, and they're, you're nearby, so Epilema can easily get up, move her remaining half movement, and still attack. Zartok, what do you want to do? Zartok falls to the floor and watches the mop bucket nimbly move around <laughs> and just shakes his head. Um, he will also cast Finn's Earthen Grasp and try to uh, get our our fireboy Bism. And he'll give him that six roll so that he uh, fails it, hopefully. It's a DC 14 strength roll. Ah, uh, all right. So, so we'll you're, fail. All right. So, yeah, he fails it then. Okay. So he takes 2d6 damage. What kind? Seven uh, bludgeoning damage. Seven um, points of bludgeoning damage. And he is restrained. Restrained. That means that he has disadvantage on attacks, and you have advantage on attacks against him. Um, I can look up the condition. I'm hoping he can't cast spells also, but I'm not sure. Uh, no, he can cast spells. No. Uh, yeah, attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage, uh, and he has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws while he's okay. restrained. How long does that last? That's a uh, concentration for a minute. Okay. Um, he'll he probably, gets to save he, he could probably get round. out of it later. Okay. Right. He gets to save at the end of his every round? Yeah. Or? Okay. Um, and Zartok stands up. All right. Zartok stands up. Athelflaed, what do you want to do? I'll go ahead and hit him with a crossbow. All right. Take a shot. Advantage. <laughs> yeah, you have advantage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Okay. Um, <laughs> natural 20 on the second one. All yeah. right. Yeah, that's what okay. we do. <laughs> 23. Points 23 of points of damage. Ouch. Dang. All right. That made him very angry. He recoils from this crossbow bolt. It goes right into his gut. Uh, Tara, what do you want to do? Stand up. Tara stands up. Can I attack too? Uh, yes. You can uh, get close enough. That's that's my step two. All right. Wow. I rolled a lot. And do I get advantage on that too? Uh, yes, you do get advantage on your attack. Thank goodness, because that was a one. <laughs> Natural 20. 
Oh my gosh, <laughs> another yes. That's what we do. Okay, well, that, not that exciting because I got a, a one, a four, so five, nine. All right. And then I attack again. Okay. It's a 22 to hit. Okay, that's a hit. And this time it's uh, nine damage again. Nine again. Uh, oh, and Tara, you take fire damage from the melee attack. How much? You take nine points of fire damage. Okay. As a gout of flame shoots out of his body from right where you stabbed him. That is Bism's turn. Bism casts Fireball on himself. Of course he does. And that means everyone's going to take fire damage. Make a dexterity saving throw, everyone. Uh, Zartok's going to give himself an 18. 13. And then his important rolls are done. Tara, what did you roll? 17. Oh, you saved just barely. Zartok, what did you roll? I mean, what was your replacement? 19 total. 19. You save Paxton? 20. 20. Unnatural. Nice. Oh, nice. Dexterity saving throw. 20. Nice. Athelflaed. Only 13. Oh, Athelflaed failed, and ah! Epilema also failed. Jeb, what'd you get? I also failed. I got a 12. Uh, okay. No, so Jeb. those of you that failed take 27 points of fire damage. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Um, those of you that succeeded take half. Except for me, right? Uh, except for Paxton, who, uh, so the half would be uh, 13 points of fire damage. Paxton, you take none because of your shield mastery feat. And that is his turn. Actually, he will also float up higher into the air. Uh, now, that means you could take attacks of opportunity on him if you want to, but you're going to get hit by that fire shield effect if you do, if you hit him. Do you want to take attacks of opportunity, those of you who are in melee? Do I get to attack a once or twice? Once. Uh, uh, attack. All right. Can he float up if he's restrained? He's got Ooh, a speed He's restrained by the earth and grasp. He can't, you're right. He has a movement speed of zero. So, no, he can't do that. Never mind. Scratch that. He's got a movement speed of zero. He cannot fly away. So that means it is now Paxton's turn. Paxton, what do you want to do? Did he save against the the whatever? Oh, yeah, the at the end of his turn, he gets to save. And what's the DC? Uh, 14. And it's a strength, strength saving throw. He fails. Cool. Paxton, what do you want to do? All right. Uh, how far away am, from him am I at this oh, point? Oh, you're, you're close. You could Pretty close. get into melee combat if you want to. Did he, like, heal from fireballing himself? Like, is he, like... He is unaffected by it. Okay. I'm I'm far away enough to not get that uh, fire damage from a shield, right? If you want to be, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I want to back up a little bit. Right. And then I'm going to try a little combo. Okay. I'm going to hit him with level one guiding bolt as my action. Okay. That is a 22. Wow. Yeah, that, that's that hits good. him. You hit him with a guiding bolt. Okay, and that's 4d6. And then every attack after this until the next turn has... Wait, no, it's not every attack. It's just the next attack. Just the next one. 23. 23 radiant damage. All right, (laughs) that's a solid hit. And then what's your follow-up? My follow-up is... Spiritual weapon. Yes. DM's note. As I've mentioned previously, if a character casts a bonus action spell, then the only other spell they're allowed to cast that round is a cantrip. And spiritual weapon is not a cantrip. All right, um, so let's see. And that's a miss. Okay. Wait, no, except for I have have advantage. advantage. And that is a hit. That is a 21. That's a hit, yeah. Okay, and spiritual weapon is 1d8 plus 3, 8 radiant damage. Okay, and that brings us to uh, Jeb. Jeb, what do you want to do? So, uh, I mean, I don't want to become on fire, but I also hate this guy, so... Yeah, I yeah. think I'm gonna try to uh, try to bite him. Okay, well, make your attack roll. Do I get advantage on this? Yes, he is restrained. You get advantage. Excellent. Oh, awesome. Uh, so I rolled a 17 plus five is 20. Yeah, 22. That is a hit. Jeb, the, the mop bucket rolls up and chomps on this guy. I guess he sort of pushes himself into the air with the with the mop. <laughs> <laughs> so I got. Eight piercing damage and uh, three acid damage. Jeb, finish off Biz in the Blaze. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. Justice. <laughs> with, a, with a well-placed wow. bite. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I just, like, grab onto him, like, and just start, you know, chewing down on him. I'm, like, <laughs> devouring him with my big mop bucket mouth. mouth. Yeah, you, you won't tell anyone else this, Jeb, but he tastes good. Ugh. 
<laughs> I mean, you're a mimic now. Yeah. And to a mimic, this guy is is tasty. He's already cooked. Yeah, he's he's yeah. He's, he's well done, I mean, but yeah. I think we just found our art. I'm like, I'm not doing this because I enjoy it, guys. Just this is just the easiest way to get rid of the evidence. Why why are you still chewing? (laughs) (laughs) I want to roll an insight check to see if I believe him. (laughs) Just to make sure he's dead. (laughs) He has a taste for blood now. Yeah. We're going to have to put Jeb down. Oh. Taste for charred (laughs) flesh. The figure drops to the ground, the flames suddenly extinguishing, and all that's left is a charred humanoid form. And it exhales a puff of smoke and then collapses into ash, leaving nothing but ash in Jeb's mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Paxton pats Jeb on the uh, shoulder, whatever the shoulder of a mop bucket would be, and says, uh, well done. (laughs) Get it? Uh, Well done. uh, It hurts. I guess that'll be the episode title. Well done, Mop Bucket. Well done. <laughs> that would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> is Jeb kind of melty? You know, like the pla- um, plastic melty? Or is this like old school wooden Mop Bucket? Yeah, this yeah, has got to be a wooden Mop Bucket. Okay. Sure. See, I've I been don't think there's plastic in d and I've been imagining a <laughs> yeah. big industrial plastic Mop Bucket this whole time. No. I think medieval Mop Bucket. Okay. I was thinking scary Mr. Bucket. You know the game? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... What do you want to do? I I celebrate my victory by uh-huh. by going and checking out that shiny new mop bucket. <laughs> Jeb, this is your missing mop bucket. Oh my god, my missing mop bucket, you guys. <laughs> <gasps> the one that's magic and fills with water when you want it to. I I just I'm just like cradling it in <laughs> in my mop head. <laughs> oh. Jeb has found his missing mop bucket. Little hearts float up into the air above them. <laughs> So it's one mop bucket cuddling another? Yes. That's so touching. <laughs> it's his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's his long-lost mop bucket. Happy ending. Heresy's a door. 